all my life been a derelict, derelict. All my friends, they wish me dead. They wish me dead. Change, yeah, I swear to it. And of all the times I've been down and out, this time was different. I welcomed it. Every day that I fail to quit, I wind up here and just stay on in. The heavy weight, cause it's bound to break. I need a break, so I'm in. The tip of my tongue tastes like battery acid. Try to push forward, I cannot push past it. Feel the blood on my tongue, it tastes metallic. Another day passes, I don't break the habit. I've got this in the Typical been plenty of moments that i fell in hard times more often than not getting faded was my lifeline i realized that i've always struggled with change but sometimes you gotta rearrange before you go insane i've been doing my best to stay true to myself put my next foot forward and smoking dope for my health i never give up the music till i'm rolling in wealth some days i swear this bass is my own personal health well i love the sound of the city god damn i love the sound of the city yeah yeah I'm wide awake when you're with me. I feel better when you got my back, yeah. Red eyes, I'm sky high. I think this might be the best night that I've ever had, that I've ever spent with you. I confess I'm obsessed with the sex. Heart palpitations every time that she texts. I admit that we ain't always been the best for each other, but what is love without the little test? Girl, you know you're my sneaky link When I'm with you, my ego shrank I'm just craving time for us alone I think about you every time I'm home smoking dope I love the sound of the city God damn, I love the sound of the city Yeah, yeah I'm wide awake when you're with me I feel better when you got my back, yeah Red eyes, I'm sky high I think this might be the best night That I've ever had
What's up, everyone? Happy Friday. Uh, gonna get into a lot of analysis, gonna talk about what's coming, but wanted to talk about two things first on stream. Uh, but first things first, what's up? Uh, what's up, Donnie? Raphael, what's going on? Merrick? Nuno? Just imagine? Excuse me. Dorian, I know you'll be here. And yes, sir, I know you'll be here as well. I need a new mic. It just keeps like flopping over that or I need to figure out how to tighten all this stuff. Um, but okay, first things first, I wanted to talk about this. Uh, I know it's kind of a self plug, but, uh, you know, provide a lot of information for free. So, you know, just accept there's going to be an ad here or there. Uh, first of all, uh, I do the daily, I do a daily private analysis every day and I wanted to show you guys the notes that I took this morning. Uh, these are all the things that I talked about and essentially what we're doing is we're going through every single chart and we're trying to figure out, you know, what is matching up or lining up and what what's going to happen moving forward. So between all of these notes, basically with equities, we're saying market wide bearish, DXY is market wide bearish, total one, USDT, Bitcoin, Ethereum, everything was leaning market wide bearish. You can read through these notes if you'd like. There are all the reasons why, you know, I show it live. Like I show the charts. I, you know, we point out the divergence up there. We talk about the potential head and shoulders of Bitcoin. We look at overextension, but essentially what we're trying to summarize is the next large move up in the market or basically the next large move in the market should be bearish because of all the data gathered. Again, uh, I, I kind of concluded we're leaning towards a five to 10% correction on Bitcoin, which will have alts correcting, then mini alt season, then a large market wide correction overall as everything is overextended. Um, you know, I posted charts in here, but we went over them already on stream. Talked about how every time we see a large pump to the upside, we have these, and a large pump meaning like about 100%, we see about a 30% correction. So, aligning all of this data, giving you a clear picture. We also walk through trade setups if they're, there, if they're readily av available <clears throat> per my trading system. But for anyone that was interested or just, you know, you wanted to know what it, what it's about, that's what it's about. It's about 30 minutes to an hour long. Uh, again, covers charts, covers fundamentals, covers general finance, covers a lot more than just looking at a chart and saying, oh, you know this. We, we answer questions like, why is it doing this? Like, what are we looking at moving forward or what are we predicting moving forward? Uh, the second aspect that I wanted to talk about, uh, I know you guys, I know it's an exchange plug, um, but CoinCatch is having a, uh, a sign-up event for the ETF approval. Uh, I think you can get up to 300 bucks. You get 15% off fees for life. Uh, pretty good. And there's a trading competition, so you can compete against me and some of the other traders in the Discord. And I believe you can win up to $5,000. So it's free money right? There's nothing wrong with that. But all right, let's get into analysis for today. Uh, <clears throat> seems host is missing. What are you talking about? I'm long from day one trading. Oh, okay. How did you know? what? Oh, dude, I always know you're here. I always know you and your sir are always here. I know it. I love it. You guys are, are the best. <clears throat> not that every, anyone else viewing isn't the best, but shout out to all the, all the people that are always here, even when it's boring, even when nothing's going on, when there's nothing to talk about. We've got a lot to talk about today. But i uh, going to start with SPX. Guys, ultimately, I talked about this this morning in the Daily, the daily Brew. It's Daily Analysis. We're expecting a, a bull flag. Ultimately, some consolidation, maybe a pullback. Uh, why we're overextended, and, and we could simply just move sideways as well for that correction. But the biggest thing, I'm going to change this to white. The biggest thing for me is we have bearish divergences, right? We have a slightly higher high. We're also looking at a potential double top. We have these bearish divergences. They need to sort themselves. Unless we just rip faces upwards next week, which we're already seeing, you know, some Doji reversal candles and whatnot. It seems very unlikely that we're just going to do this on RSI. So for me, again, maybe we do something like this, get that nice little bear flag, continue upwards. Ultimately, you know, you're looking at a, a huge pump with no correction. A 15, 16% pump on SPX is like a 50% pump on Bitcoin, maybe even higher. So ultimately, again, looking for that bear flag or excuse me, bull flag to continue higher on the DXY. So DXY is making a bear flag. Uh, we bounced off support again, finding confluence with the SPX that we're 
um, ultimately consolidating to continue a macro bullish move. Uh, Bitcoin's doing the same thing where Bitcoin's correcting, same as SPX, same as the other indexes, right? NASDAQ's correcting, uh, uh, excuse me, Dow Jones is correcting as well, or consolidating before higher. All of these things have to happen so we can bring indicators back to the mean so we can sort divergences so that n not only, uh, and just so you guys know, not only do funds and, and major investors not buy at tops, uh, you know, they're, they're not, they're looking at the same indicators that we are. They're not going to buy when there's clear signs of, of, uh, not, not necessarily trend exhaustion, not necessarily macro exhaustion, but there's lower time frame exhaustion. They know they can get a better price and, and buy somewhat lower. Love from India. Oh, I appreciate it. Appreciate it. But yeah, DXY, expecting a bear flag, full confluence with SPX. So into total, I talked this morning with everyone in the morning brew. I said, and what's funny is we were, we were at the circle this morning. We dumped pretty hard today. I said that, you know, this doesn't close until Sunday, and it's very, very likely that this dumps, right, that we dump and reject that resistance. This is acting somewhat as deviation. Uh, I don't believe that we go any higher. It doesn't make any sense. Right, it does not make any sense to continue higher, at least in the short term. Bitcoin is overextended. A lot of altcoins, and now I will say alts have not moved hardly at all, and we'll get to that when we talk about Bitcoin dominance and Ethereum to Bitcoin. But just Bitcoin in general, it's gone up almost a hundred percent with no no correction, no pullback, no consolidation, or no significant period of consolidation. So I don't believe that this is going to result in a breakout this week. Again, confluence with DXY. Again, confluence with SPX. So when I'm writing, and, and I, you know, we go back to the Discord, right? Let's let's go back here just so I can showcase this. We talked about equities, expecting a pullback, bear divs, one day SPX, D, DJI, NDQ, market wide bearish, right? DXY holding support, forming bear flag, likely see range, market wide bearish, right? We haven't broken down of the bear flag, so it's agreeing with equities. When you go into total one, one day bear divs, currently breakout, but three days left is potential of spinning top reversal. One week bear divs RSI, right? When we go back to this chart, now you're starting to see how this lines up and how we determine how we determine uh, the next market move, right? Because, you know, sometimes you're not going to nail the trade setup and you're not going to get the setup you want, but at least you can know the market direction to maybe look at a lower time frame and try and jump in that setup, uh, you know, Maybe not close to the bottom, but in the middle of it. So we have these divergences, right? Very, very clear. We have higher highs on uh, price, lower highs on RSI. Very, very clear divergences. I, again, this is exhausting. This trend is exhausting. It needs to, you know, whether it be a comeback and retest a prior support level, or excuse me, a prior resistance level as support, uh, you know, that's up for discussion later on. On the tether. So again, agreeing with total, agreeing with the dollar, agreeing with SPX, we have bounced off our significant support level. We are back into our minor support level, right? When you zoom out, look at this. We can see we had a lot of struggle up in the 5.6, 5% to 6% level. Actually, no, 5 to 5.5% level. So we bounce back in that minor support level, ultimately making a bear flag to continue lower, uh, to my belief. Whether that means that we, again, retest a significant area that was once support, turning it into new resistance, and then continuing, or simply making that bear flag and continuing, that is up for discussion later on. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Going to keep moving, right? And, and again, back to the Discord. Notes. USDT forming bear flag, macro bearish, but short term bullish as could bounce, did bounce at major support level, market wide bearish. So everything that we've talked about so far is market wide bearish. Now we're moving on to Bitcoin, right? Looking at Bitcoin, look at the weekly. Do you see anything bullish here? Now, I know there's a couple more days left in the week. We can we can change this candle. But as it stands. And all of the confluence, we have bearish, 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 bearish. What, what do you conclude here? All the other charts are bearish or showing a market-wide bearish move. The DXY is short-term bullish. Tether dominance is short-term bullish. This is going to be short-term bearish. Short-term meaning a couple months, right? Not, not a couple hours, not a couple minutes, a couple months. 
So we look at the weekly and we're like, wow, that's pretty intense. Now you look at the daily and this is where it gets interesting. For those of you that have been trading a while and know your trading patterns, what does this look like, right? We have a, a, a low and a high when you open up divergences or RSI and MACD, you have bearish divergences. So we can conclude, right? The next move should be down. These divergences have to sort. This goes down, major support level, right? Okay, now what does this look like? When it's like this, let's say we bounce back up to here. What does this look like? It looks like a head and shoulders, right? We have a left shoulder, a head, and now a right shoulder. If this goes down, pops up one more time, now you have another level of divergence. This is how we kind of solve the puzzle of the over, like what is the market going to do? What, how are we going to move? You know, there's always a chance that it doesn't play out. Maybe we're in some kind of diagonal uptrend, but let's go back to our notes. We've talked about how equities, expecting a pullback, market-wide bearish. DXY is market-wide bearish. Everything here is market-wide bearish. Going through Bitcoin, we have one-week bear divs forming. We have a potential head and shoulders reversal forming with bearish divergences. Possible sell the news ETF event. So yes, the ETF was passed, but the rumor started at 25K and it was passed at 48, 49K. Uh, H4 resting near 44.8K. Again, this was way earlier. Now we're, about, now we're much below it. 40K is next. If you look at this chart, when support is lost, we go to the next support, right? We flip and we'll likely turn this into resistance, go to the next support level. And when you're looking at this, you start to form the head and shoulders. You start to put the puzzle together. So, Bobby, you're somewhat right. What is a spinning top and reversal? Uh, you need to look up candle patterns. But, Bobby, you're, you're partially right, right? So, and we're going to tap more on Bitcoin in a moment. So if we're saying we're getting this head and shoulders reversal, right? Let's say we get this. We already, I already made the post that we're going to land somewhere in the 32 to 35K zone. Because if you completely zoom out and you look at all of the market corrections along the way, they're about 30%. So from the top to the bottom, 30% is about 34,000. So that's where we're looking to land with this head and shoulders. And then, you know, drawing in a macro view, you're probably going to do, again, something like this, right? And look at that. We're following a massive uptrend. Isn't that funny how that lines up the way it does, right? Isn't that funny? So our macro uptrend, we're likely going to tap it, continue, you know, uh, and continue upwards. What a coincidence. That's how TA works. Uh, anyways, so when this right shoulder is forming, when Bitcoin gets that kind of temporary upward move, what happens to alts? And this is what I'm talking about when I think, uh, or when I say, you know, I put it in the subject line of the live stream. I put Bitcoin is dumping, but what are alts going to do? So here's what alts are going to do. You look at Bitcoin dominance. We have a confirmed head and shoulders, right? Confirmed head and shoulders. This is below the neckline, fully confirmed. Now, a couple of things, right? Bitcoin is probably going to dump further because this has to cool off. It's likely going to retest its neckline and then continue lower. On the continuation lower, right? Let's look at Ethereum to Bitcoin really quickly. Ethereum to Bitcoin, one, is bounce set support. Two, has weekly bullish divergences. And three, uh, why is Bitcoin going to continue going lower? Look at the four hour, right? The four hour, we can zoom out completely. If the four hour is at a level where over the last, since July, 2022, it's corrected, right? You look at every single time here, down. Where's the next one here, down, here, down, you know, all, all of these, literally all of them here, down, here, down, here, down. That doesn't mean we're going to go lower. It just means that we're likely going to see this taper off, come back to support, and then likely continue upwards. Why? Because Bitcoin dominance has a head and shoulders. This is a reversal pattern. That means that liquidity is going back into altcoins. Bitcoin dominance is showing weakness. Liquidity is going back into alts. So if you're you know, taking in all this information, you know that you know, generally in a kind of cycle, and this isn't to say the macro market cycle for crypto, but any type of large swing trade move, it goes 
Bitcoin goes first. So Bitcoin goes up and then Bitcoin kind of distributes and then altcoins go up, right? Altcoins go up. Bitcoin continues to move sideways. What happens after that? Maybe slightly up. Everything tops and then everything corrects, right? Everything corrects. I know this is a horrible drawing. Follow my words, not the drawing. I'm not Picasso. Wish I was. Uh, But essentially, that's what happens. It goes Bitcoin, then Ethereum, right? When you start seeing Ethereum pump more than Bitcoin, starting to see Ethereum to Bitcoin really rip upwards, the end of that swing move upwards, sorry, that swing move upwards is ending. And when when I mean by swing move upwards, I'm specifically talking about this. I'm specifically talking about this whole entire swing upwards, right? We have to correct. There is no way that we can continue moving higher with all of these divergences, with all of these problems on the chart. There's too many problems. No one, no one with any sort of decent trading experience is going to buy here, right? I know you're saying, oh, but the ETF, but it's going to bring more money and all this and all that. Guys, you could have, like US institutions can buy Bitcoin on Coinbase, that is fully, and I believe Coinbase has insurance. It's not FDIC insured, but it has insurance. You don't get enough props, man. You're one of the best analysts in the game. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate it. So this in the bigger channels today and basically got called a clown. So, Bobby, I'm not calling you a clown at all. I just, I was putting a little bit more like timeline. Like, yes, Bitcoin's going to dump. And Bitcoin's likely going to possibly pump a little bit again if we're looking at that head and shoulders. Bitcoin's going to move from 40 to 45K, about a 10% move. But altcoins like Ethereum, like what if Ethereum does this, right? Like what if Ethereum retests this and rips all the way to 35K during this time period, during the time that Bitcoin is correcting, right? Let's see how long it took to form the right-handed shoulder. (laughs) <laughs> on Bitcoin, cause, or the left-handed shoulder, because the right-handed shoulder. So this is December 5th to January 7th. So we have a month of mini alt season, right? And I keep saying mini alt season because it's not going to be some crazy... I mean, there's going to be some coins that do really, really well, but most of them, you know, they're just going to put in decent gains. They're not going to put in anything... You know, Ethereum's probably not going to do a 100% move, but if you look at it from this support level here, another 50% is pretty solid. Can I play, explain what would happen in the short term for alts except ETH? Everything is going to go down. If Bitcoin decides to nuke 10%, altcoins are going down with it. And I've kind of already explained that with Bitcoin dominance. Could happen, my guy, but doubtful. You think 10K Bitcoin is possible. And look, I, I don't want to, I don't mean any disrespect, but that is, like, you have to remember, BlackRock was buying. BlackRock was buying down here. All those institutions were buying down there. I don't I don't think we touch below that. I don't even think we go near 20k like ever again. There's just no way. Now that the new trend will also be ETH ETF and then others like Link. Yeah, yeah, you've got a good point. So if the ETH ETF and and you're looking at this is a great lesson, right? Ethereum's rumored to have its ETF. Bitcoin was rumored here right? It ripped upwards. Look at Ethereum, right? We're getting that ETF kind of rumor here, right? It should rip upwards. On the day of the announcement, sell everything. Literally sell everything. Walk away. Just sell it. Enjoy your profits. Walk away. You're already seeing what's happening to Bitcoin upon the ETF announcement, right? You're already seeing the levels of market exhaustion that are there for Bitcoin and we're likely going to correct pretty significantly. And during this correction, Retail is going to exit the market. Everyone's going to say crypto sucks. Everyone's going to stop paying attention to crypto. And then we're going to rise again. And everyone's going to FOMO the top like they always do. 10K ETH, not Bitcoin. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I don't think we get a 10K ETH within the next couple months, though. I think it's going to take at least a year. Right? I mean, the, the 2020 bull market lasted six, seven months, right? I mean, even Ethereum, you you go back and, you know, from 300 to 4,000, now that's a nice gain, but that still took, you know, six, seven months. Actually longer than that, like eight or nine months. 
Yeah, okay. That's a good one. That's a good call. Not alt season, alt session. Alts are going to take liquidity from Bitcoin. Yeah, that's that's a better way to word it. Much better way. All right. I'm going to use these last couple minutes. I got a the sun's out finally. Uh I was waiting for the sun to come out to walk the dogs. Uh any questions you guys have on today's analysis? Uh, it's Friday. I know you guys want to enjoy your weekend. I want to enjoy my weekend. Let's take like 5 10 minutes of questions and then we'll get out of here. Go ahead and go ahead and shoot them. I don't know, man. You have to remember this is utility bull run. Bitcoin has no utility. Now it's playing with the big boys on the stock market. But anyways, Bitcoin looks pretty sad next to oil and cotton. Yeah, you're probably right. Uh, So my thing with utility, a utility bull run, is until the United States, because I believe half the money in crypto is in the United, like in the United States, like half the crypto investors are U S from the U S uh, until the U S decides to stop bashing crypto. Uh, it, it won't see that true, like massive parabolic run right until it's widely adopted and, and stop. It, it needs to stop being taboo in America. It's like, it's like treated like marijuana, like 20 years ago, like marijuana was treated like crack cocaine today. And uh, now it's widely accepted. You know, all the stocks, ripped upwards everyone loves weed i mean that's that's what's going to happen with crypto at some point do you sell the do you sell the actual bull market happening next year uh possibly do you think we'll have a sole etf i have no idea i'm sorry i'm answering that with like few words but i have no idea and i don't i don't really follow soul Why do you think USDT will break the diagonal support? Because crypto will likely go into a bull run because stocks are already in a bull run. Crypto is likely going to follow stocks um, upwards. I'm not a fan of head and shoulders. Trend lines are what I watch. So the head and shoulders is the most uh, accurate pattern in trading. I believe it. I believe it's successful like 75 to 80% of the time. You can see H and S over. No, you can't. So a lot of people think that like, and I'll give you a great example. A lot of people think that like some people think that like this is a head and shoulders and it's not right. This is a V shaped recovery and these aren't even shoulders. Uh, Let me find like another, a better example for you. Someone asked me earlier, and maybe it was on link. Yeah, someone. Eh, no, that's a bad example. Like some people will go, oh, this is a head and shoulders, right? Like, no, that's just a V-shaped recovery to the downside. Ultimately, this is going to go down, so it doesn't even matter. But no, like people will look at stuff like that. That's like people that, and I guess I could draw it like this. That is never a head and shoulders. A head and shoulders is more uniform, more spread out. It's very easy to determine. It's like a double bottom. Like some people think that like that's a double bottom and it's not, or they'll think that this is a double bottom. That is also not a double bottom. A double bottom literally looks like a W. It lines up perfectly together. They don't invalidate. They don't deviate. Like the best patterns don't, and the best and most reliable patterns do not deviate from each other. When do you suspect we have the actual bull market? I have, uh, I, I would think like late 2024, maybe. I mean, that's a tough question to ask because there's a lot that can happen in the next year. With ETH being deflationary asset with unlimited supply. Uh, okay, you can't be a deflationary asset if you have unlimited supply. So I, I think ETH being a deflationary asset is very, very bullish in the long run, right? Uh, but that's hard to tell. It's hard to say 
Like, I don't, I mean, doesn't ETH have a defined, uh, I'm pretty sure ETH has a, like a defined amount. Like it doesn't have a, an unlimited supply. I know XRP has an unlimited supply. They can print as much as they want. That's why XRP hasn't broken its 2017 high. in the discord the success of hns pattern rate is also there yeah it's there's a lot of stuff in my discord that uh is for free that we put out there and there's a whole probabilities and patterns and the head and shoulders and inverted head and shoulders have like an 80 percent success rate but that's the problem a lot of people think that again like that is a head and shoulder that this is not a head and shoulders this is a v-shaped recovery a head and shoulders again more uniform more spread out. I can show you a good example of a of an inverted head and shoulders on the Bitcoin daily. A great example of an inverted head and shoulders and a head and shoulders. Look at this. Inverted head and shoulders, head and shoulders. More uniform, uh, more pronounced. They're kind of falling in line with each other. The left shoulder isn't, you know, like when you see something like this, th this is way too much of a price discrepancy. This, they're for, more uniform. It's easier to tell. The right shoulder doesn't deviate. Nothing crazy is happening. So again, and same here with inverted head and shoulders. Very, very easy to tell. That's why some people will look at this and they'll say, oh, that's an inverted head and shoulders. No, it's not. This is not an inverted head and shoulders. You have far too much uh, percentage difference. Also, they're not spread out like this one is. It. This is a V-shaped recovery to continue moving downwards. That's all that is. I genuinely think you are the best trader on Twitter, bro. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Too much good information for free. I really do appreciate the kind words. Really do. And I'm trying to give the most value I can. I know some of it I do on Patreon, but I charge less than net, uh, net, less than a Netflix subscription. So, um, you know, at some point, like, and I know some people are like, oh, why don't you just do it for free? And it's like, yeah, but I wake up every day at 9 in the morning, set up this whole daily analysis and I give, you know, I go over charts for, you know, I record that for all of them and then I'm going over charts for like two hours to post on Twitter. So it is a lot of work and then I live stream for free. So, you know, it is a lot of work. I post a lot more, like a lot of free information, uh, but some of it, it doesn't hurt to ask to be paid for. No, XRP can be, um, more coins can be printed. Don't you think that money rotation will take place short term and push ETH towards 3K, which would be bullish for all short term within the next days, weeks? Yes. So we just covered that. If you need more information on that, uh, go back in the live stream. It's work, dude. You need to be paid for it. Yeah, of course. No, I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, people that understand that, thank you. It's part of the reason why I, I have a, a, a sponsor for the stream because I do this three times a week. It's three hours a week. Uh, also, I have to come up with content every day. It's it's not just like you guys are here and it's a 30 minute or 45 minute recording, but I have to come up with all the things I'm going to talk about. I have a list on my other screen that I glance at. I'm like, okay, we went through that. We go through this. Now this combine this all, you know, it it's it is what it is. Maybe having a million followers would create too much attention and cause whales to manipulate the market against your ideas. Possibly, but I, I don't think, I don't think whales care and check Twitter. I think it's just a general sentiment. Like when you go on Twitter and there are people with millions of followers that are great traders. Like you look at Peter Brandt and like even he, and he has like 500,000, I think even people troll him. It's crazy. And he's like one of the greatest traders to ever live. XRP is a max supply of 100 billion. No more can be created. Okay, gotcha. I was always told that it, it more could be created, but I'll look I'll look into that further. I'll take a couple more questions and I'm going to end it. Um, again, guys, uh, just real quickly while these come in. Uh, thanks to everyone that comes out and watches the live streams uh, during the bear market. You know, I continued streaming once or twice a week. It was very very boring because we'd have these really long periods of sideways movement. I just want to say thank you to, you know, everyone that stuck around, stayed around. Maybe the even if you're new and you're here, 
thank you for being here. Uh, I wouldn't be doing it if you guys weren't consistently here or, you know, checking everything out. Uh, it means a lot. My dream has always been to provide like a, a kind of like a sanctuary of information that's reliable. It's not always correct, but it's at least a place where you can learn um, safely. And they're not, you know, I'm not telling you to go in with 50 times leverage. I'm giving you risk management and I'm giving you, you know, multiple levels of confluence to uh, help you make a better decision. And and honestly, uh, and I'm not trying to uh, show how big my ego is, but I haven't seen anyone else in the space do that. So I'm really happy that, um, you know, that I, I can still continue to do this and you guys really enjoy it. So again, thank you to all of you that uh, have supported me over the last uh, couple of years. Do I think XRP can push to a dollar or a dollar twenty? So I'll be honest, I don't even have XRP on my chart. Uh, I don't know a lot about XRP. Uh, I can pull it up, but again, I like I'm not focused on XRP. XRP has proven to me that it's not worth investing in. Uh, okay, this is not the right chart, but just for your sake, it's at fifty-eight cents. I don't know. I, I just don't like XRP. It's holding a nice little diagonal here. But I don't know. I don't. I don't really like it. And and if you do like XRP, like all the power to you. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just not a fan. Like I would much rather trade something like Link. I'd rather trade something like maybe Tau or Crow. I think Crow has a lot of potential. Roman doesn't believe in XRP, so I can't endorse him. No, it's not that I don't believe in XRP. It's guys, there's 22,000 coins. Like I I picked 10 that I really like and, you know, that's based on historical data, that's based on, you know, some research. Uh, a lot of them are AI related, so like you could be like, "Oh, why don't you like Soul?" And it's like it's not that I don't like Soul or wouldn't be willing to invest in it. I I've just picked what I think will do well. And hey, XRP and Soul could put more gains in than some of the coins I'm in. And I'm okay with that because at the end of the day, you have to pick what you believe in. And, you know, if it goes up and you make money off it, there's nothing wrong with that. That's, that's a positive in my book. XRP looks like a massive head and shoulders. Gosh, you guys are just on one with XRP. Uh, oh, this, this is not a, this is not a head and shoulders. That's not, not a head and shoulders. I don't know why. Let me pull up XRP. Let's try Bitstamp because Bitstamp's been around a while. Oh my! I'm just gonna add all of these. Yeah, there's the life of XRP. So yeah, this is kind of what I mean. Like XRP again has failed to. And look, if this is the run where XRP goes up to $5, like, awesome for you. Like, that's sick. But uh, I, I'm personally just not, and there's nothing wrong with it, but I'm just personally not interested. Do you have a formal background in finance trading, or do you self-taught, have a mentor? So... Uh, for those of you who don't know, I traded on, so I, I have a lot of self-taught. I started trading when I was 16 years old in high school. Uh, I was really not good uh, at all. And then uh, in, when I went to college, I took a bunch of like in portfolio management and investment classes and they, I mean, they didn't really help. You learn a little bit about risk management, but I was still kind of actively trading. I was trading a lot of biotech stocks and like sell the news events. Um, and then, uh, then I started working for uh, two different financial firms, and one of them was on the trading floor of a major hedge fund, and uh, I did that for a couple of years. And then during COVID, I was like, "Hey, why don't I just do this on my own?" So I I did that. Uh, I've been in and out of crypto since like the end of 2016, uh, right when 2017 when we topped, and I, I lost a lot of money on that. Not necessarily a lot. I lost like 30 to 40 percent of my portfolio. Uh, bounced back. Have made it all back and and a lot more, and uh, recently, I guess recently, like as of a year year or two ago, maybe three years ago, I decided to make my Discord make yeah I guess three years ago wow time flies, 
I made the Discord, uh, you know, posted ideas on TradingView, and then went over to Twitter, started posting ideas there, and got gained a lot of traction. So I'd say I've been trading for like almost a decade. Uh, I do have a professional financial background. Uh, no, I, I understand people are going to be like, oh, are you licensed? First of all, you don't have to be licensed uh, to be an, a, an investment analyst. Uh, you have to be licensed if you're going to take other people's money and trade it. Second, uh, it depends what, what area you're in. Like right now, I'm in private equity. I work for a private equity fund. Uh, not work for, I trade for a private equity fund. I literally just make the same trades that I do uh, for them. And, uh, you know, I have a little team of people that, help uh help out but it's not a nine to five it's like literally i literally i sit here and you know if i see the trade i make it if i don't then i don't uh but yeah i do that as well i'm involved in a lot of uh whether it be angel investing real estate investing so i'm a broad spectrum now i'm more heavily involved in finance than i've ever been uh, i'm completely out of corporate finance and have been for a couple years so i would say I do have professional experience, but my professional experience has gone up tenfold since I left the corporate world because the corporate world guys, you don't, they ha, they are under so many different boundaries and they bind you to them. So you're just stuck doing the same thing all the time. You don't learn anything new. You can't use your own ideas. And part of that's to protect the investor. And part of that's because, you know, the way that they've been doing things works and it's corporate. Like I, I hate corporate business with a burning passion now, but you know, it, it was a decent job while I had it. Oh, everyone's talking about XRP because the BlackRock CEO mentioned it. Gotcha. Gotcha. Anytime, Derek. Appreciate it. Guys, he's more realistic than any people talking trading. I'm a trader myself, and he's good. I'll appreciate it, Legion. Corporate is too regulated. Yeah, you're you're bound to a set of rules, and also they'll just fire you. You're just a number. That's all you are is a number. And that's once I kind of figured that out, like. You can be replaced. It doesn't matter if you have a CFO. It doesn't matter, or not CFO. It doesn't matter if you have your CPA or, or CFA or your license or anything. They'll just find someone to replace you. It's not that hard, at least in America. I don't know what it's like in other countries. I've never worked in another country, so I'm speaking strictly on America, but corporate companies do not care about their employees. They're always telling you like, oh man, the culture, the, you know, we care about you and and we got your back. And it's like, dude, they'll fire you and not even speak your name ever again. They'll fi they, and you know what's funny? They'll fire. I've seen this happen. They'll fire you and your manager's not even there. Your team leader's not even there. It's just two HR people or, or a couple of, of the HR team. And they just go, and I, I've never been fired before, so I can't. I've seen, I've seen videos and I've heard. They'll just call you and it's like, hey, you know, due to, you know, you haven't met performance, whatever, and you're just fired. Like, you're just a number. That's all you are. It sucks. Yeah, they own you. They own your ideas. So, like, if you have any ideas and you apply them, like, you're not going to get paid more from that. Plus, in a corporate environment, if you work hard, it doesn't matter if you're working harder or not. It doesn't matter if you're going above the extra mile. Your bonus is going to be shit. Like, they're, they're, they don't care. Right. If you work more than eight hours a day, because of most corporate work, right, it's like 40 hours a week or whatever. And also there's a stat on corporate environment, like you're only doing two and a half to three hours of work every day. So what are you doing for the other five hours? It's just a daycare. Like I had the same experience when I worked my corporate job. Like I had I literally from eight to ten could do my job and I had nothing to do the rest of the day. Nothing like at all. It was crazy. There's nothing to do. And, and I would get ridiculed for it because I'd be doing nothing because there's nothing to do. I don't get paid for doing more work. I don't get paid to finish things early or paid more to finish things early. So why should I? There's no incentive for me. So why should I provide an incentive for you? And that's the thing. They're always like, oh, you'll get promoted. And it's like, okay, well, the, but the promotion's like 0.5%. It's not even worth it. I'm not breaking my back for a company that could replace me in five seconds. 
Yeah, and they give you an empty box, put your stuff in. Like, here's here's a sh- shitty shoe box. All right, as much as I want to keep going off, uh, you know, it's been 45 minutes. Guys, again, thank you so much to everybody. I really appreciate, you know, all of the support, whether it's just a simple engagement on a tweet or you coming in the live stream and talking to me. Uh, you know, it's it's really priceless uh, to see that kind of playing out, to see my kind of dream. You know, I've always wanted to be a trader, but on top of that, I wanted to provide information people could look at and find valuable. So thank you again to everybody. Guys, have a safe weekend. And as always, be patient, 